everyone welcome back welcome back to the channel make sure you like the video share the video subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and get ready for this ghetto review we are going to be reviewing our kind of people we are now on season one episode three and it was called hot links and red drinks <laughs> now um we are going to be going over this review and then um i think i owe you guys just one more review and that is on queen sugar both of these shows come on the same night and then last night was the uh bet hip-hop awards so yes i am a little bit behind but anyway anyway make sure you guys again like and share the video and leave your comments in the comment section to let me know what you thought about the episode now first thing i want to ask is have we even touched the surface of all the secrets in this mixed family I hardly believe we have, although we still don't know all the ins and outs of Teddy's, uh, Teddy's and Eve's relationship, the world now knows about Angela. What didn't surprise me, though, about Leah was how she tried to pay off Angela. We see it over and over again. You know, whenever an illegitimate uh, child of a wealthy family or wealthy person shows up at the front door, the estranged person or parent always believe it's about the money grab. And of course, in Angela's case, it's not about a money grab. She's trying to make money, but it ain't about taking her father's money. Instead, it's about her father and her, her her sister um, acknowledging her for who she is and what she represents, as well as being determined to get a hand up from her father's incubator program, but not a handout. Something that neither that's neither in the plans of Teddy or Leah. However, I don't see them having a choice in the matter now after Angela's little performance on stage. <laughs> I knew she was going to do something. I knew she was up to something. She's really good. She's really cunning. But um, when it comes to Leah's mother, Rose Franklin, you know, showing up at the Juneteenth celebration with her granddaughter, what is it about Angela that makes Rose believe Angela is her daughter? Now, I know last week Angela spoke to Rose about her own mother, and even then, Rose had thought that Angela was her daughter. And it's not even like Angela and Leah resemble one another. Something about that just makes me want to say, hmm, as a matter of fact, Aunt Piggy never said the name of the lady who bought Angela from her mother. All we know is that the lady was easily able to hand over $50,000 for a baby. Could that woman have possibly been Leah's mother, Rose? Did Rose buy Angela from Eve? I can definitely see that as being the reason why she keeps referring to Angela as her daughter. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Speaking of daughters, do you guys also have a feeling that Leah should be more concerned with her own daughter, uh, Lauren? Lauren, who recently, you know, came out the closet to her family as being gay, she seems to be falling into pieces. At first, I was thinking, why is this girl acting like it's the end of the world? Even with Taylor, you know, dropping the charges, Lauren seemed to be having bigger issues, you know, within herself. And both Raymond and Leah, they both love her very much. That's the only daughter. As a matter of fact, Raymond didn't even flinch when Lauren told him that she likes girls. She told him, Dad, I know that you probably think that this is just some girl fight that's gone too far. I like girls. Like, I love Taylor. And her father, Raymond, responded, and I love you, okay? Always will. That's what her father said. Now, Leah, on the other hand, she seems to be, seems to be slowly coming around to the idea of her daughter being a lesbian. Either that or she's just pacifying her daughter for the meantime. Um, still yet, it's pretty noticeable how much she loves her daughter as well. So I'm wondering if it's something bigger going on with Lauren. I could be wrong, but I almost thought Lauren was about to have a mental breakdown, which made me think of Leah's mother, Rose, who obviously has some mental issues herself. One thing about the Franklins, is that they cherish their traditions handed down to each generation. Mental illness can also be handed down, or should I say, inherited. So let me know what y'all think about that. Now, in the matter of Angela's daughter, Nikki, 
I thought that was a brilliant idea for Angela to make her daughter the new face of E's crown. Uh, her daughter, Nikki, you know, she's very pretty. She got some beautiful hair, great facial, bone structure, you know, bubbly personality. Plus, being the focal point of the brand is probably exactly what Nikki, Nikki could use in her life right now because she's still trying to fit in with her new surroundings. Uh, she's still being haunted by the fight that she was in at her school. She didn't even know that somebody had recorded it, and now the video has gone viral. That on top of the fact that she really misses her grandmother also. A lot of those things um, together has really impacted her behavior, which is something that the two cousins, Nikki and Lauren, have in common. They both are showing some forms of behavioral issues over these last three episodes. Albeit Nikki's is mostly because she feels like a fish out of water in Oak Loves, that along with missing her grandma Eve, you know, who was her best friend, whereas Lauren is having a difficult time time accepting who she really is, as well as needing to be accepted by her mother, flaws and all. So maybe, I'm just thinking, maybe if Lauren could give her new cousin a chance, they could both be some type of support system for each other. And who knows, Nikki might even be able to find a best friend in Lauren, like she had with her grandmother. Um, as far as Nikki's father, I wonder what the real story behind him is. It was quite evident from Angela's expression that her daughter's father was more than just a simply a one night stand. But why keep Nikki's father a secret, especially knowing how it feels not to um have a father, you know, how it feels to long for a relationship with her own father. At the present time, Angela, she just switched up the subject when Nikki was like, um, I really wish I could just see him. He could see me and he could, or, you know, I really wish that he would come across my Instagram, my IG posts and see my eyes and realize they look like her eyes. And Angela, she just quickly, you know, switched up the subject. And that's when she suggested that Nikki be the face of, you know, her company. And then the next day, Angela paid a visit to somebody who was incarcerated to some man in jail or prison. And she told him after he said, what the hell are you doing here? She said, "It's I think it's time. It's time for Nikki to meet her father. So was that Nikki's father? Or does that guy have something to do with Nikki's father? Y'all let me know. <laughs> let me know what y'all think. Now, um, what was surprising to me in this episode was just how far Tyreek was willing to go to please Teddy. And I still believe that something peculiar happened to Tyreek's father when he died. I could be reaching, but I'm usually almost never wrong in my assumptions on my reviews. And those of y'all who've been following me long enough, <laughs> Y'all know that to be true. Nevertheless, I did say last week that I thought Angela might be moving a little fast when it comes to Tyreek. But can you blame a sister, though? I mean, Tyreek, he has been showing her so much interest. He's been trying to spend a lot of time with her. They've already, you know, met up several times, had a few days. He done bought her a pair of red bottoms and a dress. He also been fixing up odds and ends around her house, which is surely at a discounted price. And he even offered to install her security system for free. Then we find out that the security system was all Teddy's idea in order to spy on her. I didn't even see that coming. I'm like, Tariq, what are you doing? Is you about to betray this woman? Y'all ain't even known each other but a good high minute. But anyway, she seems to really like him. And I thought that he really liked her. And I still get the feeling that he does. Because I don't know. I don't know. I'm just thinking that when, Te when it comes to Teddy, this has to be more than about money. Like, does he even care for his daughter at all? I know he never intended on her finding him, but now that she has and Angela is no longer a secret, what else is he trying to hide? Because I'm certain that he's well aware that Angela is not there after his money, not even the back child support, which is probably a million dollars. Um, In fact, Tyree, he even stated that he thinks that Angela is a good person. And that also kind of led me to believe that he really does like her, but still yet. Um, I don't know what, if he feel like he owes something to Teddy, you know, to do this behind Angela's back. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, anyway, 
I just, ooh, what do y'all think is going to happen when she finds out? Ooh, when she finds out that the cameras, the security system that old boy put in her crib was to benefit her father. Mm, I don't know, but it seems to me that Teddy needs to be focusing more of his attention on our piggy instead of his daughter. Teddy, he is obviously uh, following them as well. Or maybe he's just having a uh, um, piggy follow. Speaking of which, who is Darius? The body, the body that Aunt Piggy was about to excavate on Teddy's land. Who is Darius? <laughs> Aunt Piggy had a map of the land with a certain area highlighted, but before she could get out the car, Teddy appeared. So here we have another secret being revealed. Well, kind of, because um, it seems like there's possibly a body on that property, and maybe Aunt Piggy has committed a murder. So was Darius her boyfriend, her lover, her husband, her business partner? Like, who the heck is he? I don't know. But whoever he is, Teddy bought all that land around where I believe Darius could be buried in order for nobody to, you know, tamper with the land. And Teddy never admitted to Aunt Piggy that Darius's body is on that land. I also don't think he had to admit it, being that Aunt Piggy seems convinced that she is correct. But regardless of whatever or whoever is on or underneath that land, Teddy does not want it to be discovered. And when he visited her the other day or the other night, I should say, he asked her for help in getting Angela to leave Oak Bluff and go back home. That obviously isn't happening after, you know, Angela just bogarted her way into his incubator program. But yeah, her auntie said, uh, um, I told you that Angela's stubborn as a teen. She ain't leaving and I'm done playing your game. Now, is he out there or not? And what did Teddy say? I called your bluff. You called mine. But I still hold levers on you. And when it suits me, I will use it. What other leverage does he have against her? Did she really commit murder? Who is Darius? Still has so many questions. We got a few answers this episode. A few secrets were revealed. But um, still a lot to be uh, still a lot to be left unknown. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, anyway, make sure you leave your comments in the comment section. Um, tell me what you thought about the episode. Tell me what you've been thinking about the show so far. Are you liking it? Do you love it? Is it a flop? <laughs> Please let me know how you feel about the episode and any of the storylines. And make sure you like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, please and thank you so very much. And have a good night.